Good stuff. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another Chen style Tai Chi practice. Let's take right hand in a fist, please. Left hand straight, pulling back the thumb, bringing the feet together, the hands together, and we salute. Lovely. So open your stance, please, and we'll do a wee warm up. See if I can tuck tuck the covers away. All trying to hide bookshelves and bookcases and goodness knows what. All right, so let's do a little uh, limbering into the four corners of the hips. And breathe and relax and see how your body feels this morning. Isn't it nice when the body actually responds well? It can be a bit surprising when we've been through it. I've actually been feeling really quite stiff and arthritic over the last few weeks and uh, asked in a health food shop about it and they recommended CBD oil. That's the cannabis extract. And I know I've mentioned that substance <laughs> a few times in various classes uh, to shock and horror people thinking, oh, that's cannabis, that's, you know, that's marijuana. It is from the same plant, but um, the CBD that they sell is not a drug as such. It is not, um, doesn't have any of the properties that people would take marijuana certainly from the getting high perspective it doesn't do that um but anyway i've tried it once or twice before um and didn't think much of it to be honest i tried it topically to rub it into arthritic areas which did nothing at all that i could tell um and i've tried it taking it orally in the past and didn't think much of it but this time i actually listened to the health uh health food practitioner and read the instructions on the box uh, and it's to put 10 or so drops of this oily stuff under your tongue and then to leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes um, before you swallow and I've got to say it's disgusting taste it's not a fun taste if you imagine those hemp shopping bags if you smell one of them there's that taste. It tastes like you're sucking a very strong uh, shopping bag. Um, but I must say, uh, just like the, um, the health food practitioner said, it is a game changer. I found after 10, 15 minutes of uh, having these drops under my tongue, my joints actually felt a lot smoother and the stiffness went, um, which is very impressive. Uh, whenever you really, you know, you're creaky and stiff and sore and just not having a good time to have something that can relieve the whole system um, that quickly, that was very impressive. Let's change direction, please. And I did not feel high or spaced out or in any way compromised mentally or emotionally. Um, I just felt that my joints were easier. And I've spoken with, um, I spoke yesterday with a lady who has a lot of arthritis and had tried CBD and she described the taste. I'm not sure if I would say accurately, but very graphically, <laughs> she really did not like the taste at all. Um, and I put to her, do you know what, it comes a point for me that I don't actually care how unpleasant something is if it's going to help with a problem I'll be prepared to take it obviously if it if the unpleasantness outweighs the problem fair enough but uh, if I decide something is a problem that's unpleasant and I'm prepared to put up with a lot and so I would definitely recommend CBD oil and based on my own experience, if you're prepared to cope with uh, an unpleasant taste. And I have actually, you know, it's not the first time that I've been prepared to put up with an unpleasant taste in order to get health benefits. 
um, like uh, there, there are sort of um, not quite cocktails, but you know, you can make teas with various herbs, uh, like um, CCF, for example, that's cumin, coriander, is it cumin? Uh, coriander seed and fennel. And it's actually quite a pleasant flavor. Um, but I would be putting these spices in hot water and drinking them. And uh, I'd be among colleagues and they go, what are you drinking? And I would, uh, I would explain and they would be utterly revolted and say, oh, that sounds horrible. That sounds like drinking soap. And it's not, you know, I, I didn't drink it because it tasted nice. I thought it tasted okay, to be honest. It wasn't what I would choose to drink for the flavor, but um, I was taking it as medicine, um, that it's very good for digestion and good for weight loss, supposedly. Um, <laughs> and various, well, I added other things like ginger and turmeric and yeah. Um, but as I say, I think there comes a point if you are, if you have a goal in mind, it's, it's perfectly acceptable to go beyond the pleasures of the tongue and just do what needs to be done. That's my theory. Um, and I find it's actually helpful and it's quite useful to be able to bypass, you know, that we're not children anymore, that we don't have to spit things out if they don't taste particularly pleasant. There's lots of benefits to lots of foods and um, and herbs and spices that uh, hugely outweigh the fact that we have a few seconds where we might not enjoy a flavor. Good, let's change direction. That's my theory. Of course, everyone is free to have their opinion and what you put in your mouth is absolutely your own business. Um, let's shake out, please. But if you ever go to a Chinese doctor, the traditional Chinese doctor, one that does both acupuncture and herbs. Uh, some of the herb concoctions that they give you are pretty yucky, pretty, I would go as far as to say disgusting. And I had a theory a long time ago that uh, you would go and say, oh, I'm not very well. And they'd give you this herb packet to make tea with and drink. Change the direction, please. And you'd go away and you'd make it once and you'd drink it and go, yep, I'm better. <laughs> anything to avoid drinking that again. So um, yeah, I, I definitely say be prepared to go through a little bit of unpleasantness, but we all, fair enough, we all have our limits. Good, let's open our stance and sit down a wee bit. And let's just do one circle going inwards around one leg. So do you see what I mean? I'm, I'm pointing with my hand. You could do that as well, just to give your movement a little bit of help. But you see what I mean? I'm starting going out and forwards around and in towards the body. Good. And then let's change and do the other leg. You probably can't hear my knee clicking, <laughs> but I'm getting a little regular little click. And that's not necessarily saying that there's anything wrong, just sometimes we get in the aging process, we might get a little bit of um, something that creates a click, but unless it actually hurts, I would say it's okay. If you do get pain or if you're feeling discomfort, as you progress with a repetitive movement, I would definitely do something about it. Adjust your stance. Uh, and if that doesn't sort it out, then just stop. Don't push through pain, please. Good. All right, let's come up. We're going to do just a few seconds stand. And um, I want you to really allow yourself to get nice and quiet and mellow and centered. And then we'll just go through the form. I haven't done a full warm up, so we're going to use the form as um, partially as warm up as well. But let's do our little stand. So we have our feet together and we lengthen up. 
with the chin slightly down and back. And we release and relax down through the body. Calming down. Listening behind. And let's release belly, hips, knees. Step open to your left. Shift into center and just have a little check. Make sure the feet are shoulder width and level. Check posture again. With each breath, we let go of tension. Think of melting it away. Just the top of the head remains light and floating up. The rest of the body draping, soft tissue draping off the bones. Let's float the hands away from the body a little bit forward, feel for a connection between the two hands and gently float up into your position. I've got maybe one hand length between my body and my hands. So it's quite close. And now we begin the process of listening, feeling and letting go.
Good job. We're going to very gently, softly lower the hands down. And cover center. Hug your elbows gently in. And breathe. Good. Now I'm going to set you going with your um, rotations. We want to go up the right side of your belly first, across the top and underneath. I'd like you to do nine circles in each direction and then cover center and breathe calmly and quietly again. I'm going to pause the video while you do that. Good. Well done, everyone. Okay, so I would like you to, if you possibly can, take a segment of your day that you would otherwise not be doing anything much, uh, say like a rest period if you have that, and see if you can do a stand for 20 minutes at least. I was very tempted to do a 20 minute stand with you today, um, but I just don't have the guts. <laughs> To have this live class um, and, and do 20. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a recording and the thought of just standing still silently on a recording for 20 minutes makes me feel a bit weird. But one day we will do it with your consent. I want to make sure you're happy to do that. But I would like you to give it a go on your own. As I was standing there, we were just standing for a couple of minutes and um, I felt everything was kind of falling into place and that's what you find i think the first 20 minutes really is just allowing the body to settle and allowing the structure to fall into place then if you can do any longer than 20 minutes you get a much more profound experience because once everything is in place then the true relaxation begins and the fortifying of the uh, energy so there's an expression in Tai Chi, we call it the cotton belly and the iron shirt. And I've had different teachers telling me that this means different things. So um, my very first Tai Chi teacher, Peter Gilligan, um, rest his soul, uh, he was based in Belfast. And he talked about it from a very physical, martial way, that cotton belly, he literally had someone one day I don't think it was me, but uh, he had someone gently pushing their fist into his belly and the belly just softened and the fist just kept going in. And uh, the student said, oh, my goodness, I can feel your spine. But he went to just gently push his fist in as he was instructed and all the soft tissue and all the organs just gently moved out of the way. And he just kept going until he could literally feel the spine through the body. So that, according to Peter, was called the cotton belly. Whereas the iron shirt, from what he was saying, if I understand correctly, is when you create the, the tension uh, of the muscles. And that, can you imagine if someone has punched you and your everything has sort of softened and allowed the fist to come in, and then combined with sudden tension, the iron shirt would snap the fist out very quickly. It would break the wrist. Uh, or it could cause a lot of damage. So he was talking about it in a very physical uh, term, cotton belly, iron shirt, whereas later, much later, in fact, quite recently, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, my standing practice teacher referred to cotton belly, iron shirt as cotton belly, everything, again, just soft. So you're releasing tension, you're not holding on to any tension so that everything has lots of space for the energy to flow but he referred to the iron shirt as basically you build up an incredibly powerful immune system through doing standing practice that 
germs and uh, illness just can't touch you. Because you do your standing practice, your body becomes fortified and it really um, extracts any, any pathogens out of the system because it's a, an intensive clarification that uh, by doing your standing practice, your energy really builds and it flushes. It helps with the lymphatic system. It helps your system become bug free and pretty much impervious, like you're wearing uh, armor. So that's the iron shirt, according to my standing practice teacher. But either way, it requires practice. So I'd like you to practice your standing and you want to do 20 minutes a day minimum if you want to start to get these iron shirt benefits. So any practice at all will bring benefit. Absolutely any practice, even a few seconds a day, just being mindful of your posture and releasing and relaxing will add up to um, to benefits. You'll feel more clear, you'll feel more relaxed, you're, you'll get relief for your from your structure and being aligned and all the rest of it. But if you can get into a rhythm of doing it regularly, oh my goodness, the benefits are just so potent and so obvious, or at least they're obvious to me. When I did it, uh, I did, I've done a few, I think a few, excuse me, a few 90 day challenges at one stage. I didn't count. I just did it every day, every day, every day. And oh, my practice was off the scale. It was, I was really impressed. <laughs> just unfortunately fell off the wagon a few times and that happens as well. But it's definitely, it's worth doing. Uh, and um, I encourage you to join me and keep trying, get back on that wagon and do a bit more standing. And you will notice your immune system improve. If you keep at it, um, it's, there's no shortcuts, but if you do it, you will get benefits. All right, so let us now have a wee look at the whole form. We'll just go from beginning to end. I want you to relax and dance your way through. What do I mean by dancing your way through? I want you to feel your way, listen to your body and allow your system to express the movements. So we could be technical, be technicians in our practice, or we could be performers in our practice. So today I'd like you to perform, not for me, not for anyone else, just for you and the sheer joy of doing your Tai Chi. So do the best that you can technically but allow yourself to relax and enjoy doing it. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Let's bring our feet together. We lengthen up. And the chin slightly down and back. Coming down. Listen behind. Ready, start.
right, so the kicking section, gather to the right, circle down to the left, left side comes across, sink down, prepare and kick, cross, sit down and face the back, gather the left side, turn palms, pull back toes, kick, three steps, one, two, and three, prepare for planting flowers, and turn, feet into the left, swing the right foot round, come up and over, relax down, and Protect the heart. Step left, gather right, look and kick right, toy soldier, and three way punch.
iPad on the horse. Relax to center. End game. Turn the shoulder and step. We're going to kick the back foot up, set it down, then keep the structure and pull the right shoulder back. Keep going. Beautiful, well done. Oh, we got with we got through it with ten minutes to spare. That's really nice. So, come and have a wee sip of water, and uh, tell me how you got on. If there was any parts that we got lost in or confused, or just how did you do? Yes, Eric. Yeah, okay, Jane. Yeah, it was good to do it again because we haven't done it for a couple of weeks. No, we other than we practice bits. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So you got through well. Good, Eric. Yeah, the odd wee hiccup, but uh, I always know the next time I'll get it. <laughs> good. <laughs> I good. think I'll get it. <laughs> the question is, Elaine, are the hiccups always in the same place? No. No. That's, yeah. I find that as well. Okay, Eric, yeah, go ahead. Well, I found it went quite well, actually, although I am finding more and more difficulty with the turns and my knee. Yeah. I've got um, a hospital appointment on the 20th of November mm. for an op. Oh, so, really? Okay. Is that a knee replacement, Eric? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, sometimes when it gets to that stage, there's nothing for it other than a replacement and it can bring huge benefits. It can really turn things around for you. So, uh, anyway, yeah, the other thing is that the um, cannabis um, cream, mm -hmm. you know, I've got that net on my back at this very moment. Okay. And how are you finding it? Yeah, it's hot as hell, really. With well, the first few applications, I felt nothing whatsoever. Right. But now, um, yeah, it's it's really hot. Oh, yeah. goodness. Okay. I'm guessing it's mixed with other ingredients. It's not just cannabis, would it be? Um, no, I don't know. It's some kind of cream, anyway, that I bought it. Well, my wife bought it in France. Right, okay. 
Yeah, France is very use is is very good. I think from the point of view of holistic uh, remedies, um, I was very impressed when I was there. That uh, you know their their um, allopathic medicine, the sort of what we would call Western medicine, and the more holistic medicine. There's no barrier between the two, so um, they would quite commonly recommend you know acupuncture or you know um physiotherapy or whatever um you know if you went to see a doctor you'd quite easily be sort of handed over to other therapists there and then uh, on site whereas here you know you might get a referral to a physio if you're lucky but it's quite a sort of long laborious process um and here allopathic medicine would never the twain shall meet you know you don't tend to get um any kind of uh holistic or you know natural remedy encouragement maybe occasionally you know a doctor might say well have a bath or something you know but um they they're very shy of of uh using any of the traditional remedies or um folk remedies or you know anything that is outside of the remit of allopathic medicine just doesn't get a look in which is fair enough you know it's you know if you, if you go to a flower shop expect to buy flowers um but uh yeah i'm really glad that you've got that stuff and i hope the heat is actually beneficial yeah. often yeah i mean i i was using um tiger balm on my arms the other day because i had a bit of stuck lymph and a colleague of mine who also does lymph work says, you know, you need to heat that. And there's there's stuff that you can buy for cellulite, you know, really expensive cellulite cream. But it's just gently warming the idea to break down the liquid fat that's kind of congealed and stuck um, mm. in, in pathways. So heat is often considered very, very useful. Certainly Chinese medicine, we consider heat. I say we because Tai Chi is part of the family of traditional Chinese medicine, Tai Chi and Qigong, even though we're martial, there is also that Qigong overlap of just general um, health and maintenance. And heat is considered, for the most part, incredibly beneficial. It encourages energy flow. And uh, I'll share a wee thing that I saw. I'll make, see if I can find it again. <laughs> Um, but there was a lovely uh, quote from Spring Forest Qigong saying exactly what I've been preaching the whole time, that if your energy is flowing, if your qi is flowing, then the body is balanced and healed. Um, but if there are any little blockages for whatever reason, um, then we get too much energy in one area and not enough in another, and then we're out of balance and then we suffer. So often heat is used um, as a as a method of encouraging energetic flow and you'll notice that yourself i mean if somebody slaps you across the face wherever you've been hit becomes hot <laughs> because the energy goes what has just happened and it rushes to the area and because the, there you get a flush of energy you get a flush of heat so it can be um you can start the sequence off with heat to encourage energy or you can start the sequence by whatever it is that influences the energy to go there and then you get the heat. Um, obviously, in the case of, you know, if you have a, a bite or, you know, or something has infiltrated your system and then you get a lot of heat, that can also um, suggest that there's infection. So we have to be careful with that. If a part of your body all of a sudden for no apparent reason or for an apparent reason becomes very, very hot. That it's not that you've put cream on it, but that something has just stimulated it. That is a, a big indication that there is actually infection. But again, the heat is generated because of the sheer volume of life force that is being pumped into the area to try to deal with the infection that it's it's fighting a war, basically, that there is the infection there and then there is your body doing its absolute best to fight off that infection. And so if you get this raging heat uh, in any part of your body, um, that's a big indicator. OK, it's time to go and see the doctor. It's time to deal with infection. 
Uh, and often our bodies are very good at fighting infection all on their own. But in the case of that massive heat, that suggests that it's, it's a critical time. And uh, we certainly never want to go into sepsis. I mean, that's why, you know, if, like I got a cat bite, I had to get the antibiotics. I had to, to go by that allopathic route because I did not want to go to the realms of sepsis. I didn't want to end up losing a finger or, you know, sepsis can be worse. Exactly. So um, heat is good in general, if it's a bit of heat and we can use creams and ointments and various things to generate heat. But once there is something just raging away, if there's like, you know, part of your body is like a furnace, big indication, don't stop, don't, you know, don't pass go, go straight to the doctor, go straight to hospital, get yourself seen because um, it's, it's an indication that, that your body is fighting a battle and it may need help uh, quite quickly. Okay, folks, let's do a wee warm down. I'm glad to hear that you got through the form well, and I'm glad to hear, Eric, that you're going to get yourself a nice new knee. Um, isn't it amazing that we can do these things now with modern technology? Can you imagine back in the days when once a, a joint gave up, that was it? Not pleasant. Um, tai Chi can certainly help um, with maintenance and, and general function. But just like with the infection, you know, if, uh, if there's a raging infection, do something about it. And if the lovely people in hospital can replace a joint and give you relief, why not? Why wouldn't you? Good. So let's go down to the legs. And the knees. Lower legs, ankles and feet, up the body again, and over the shoulders, good. I often find it's just at the end of the class when I'm doing warm down, I realise, whoa, I had a lot of tension in my shoulders, didn't know about that. Um, so it's even warm down is diagnostic. It's helping you become more aware of what you're working with. And having realized I'm holding tension now, that will influence my next practice and make sure that I spend more time relaxing those shoulders. So let's do a little bounce on the heels and let the whole body go nice and floppy let everything go a bit wobbly and in fact let's bring the arms up dangle them just slightly forwards and let the wrists bounce why not that gives you a lovely free ride for your lymphatic system and helps those arms go nice and light good and relax your arms down just let everything run out of steam for a moment Feel into your body, listen for any sensation. Lovely, and let's gather up that energy and bring it back to center. Feel the touch of your hands, feel the warmth flowing into your belly. And feel your energy is stronger. Beautiful work today, folks. Thank you so much for joining me and working so hard. And best wishes. Um, is it next week, Eric, that you're going in? No, the 20th of November. 20th of November. Okay, so we have a little bit of time. Yeah, all right. So um, what I would encourage you to do, Eric, is standing practice. Lots of it. 
uh, in the meantime, but it doesn't mean you actually literally have to stand. It's a bit of a misnomer because standing practice is really relaxation practice in best posture. So if you find that when you stand, it actually hurts the knee, I would encourage you to do seated standing practice. So the likes of a dining room chair, uh, or you can even do it lying in bed, but it is a deep relaxation that you go through those um, stages of listening, experiencing and letting go. And that will really help your energy to flow well, which will in turn help your system to be nice and relaxed and receptive to any to the surgery and to everything. Uh, it'll help you be in the right frame of mind, but it will also help your system to build the energy required to then help you recover after the operation. So treat your standing practice seriously and use it as a tool to relax, strengthen and prepare for, um, for what's to come. That's my advice. <laughs> See how you feel. Uh, even if you just do a few minutes relaxation every day, just you know, follow your breath and let go. It all helps. Folks, honestly, relaxation is the key to well-being. Um, if we were a really chilled out society, I would say that action is the key to, <laughs> to well-being, but it's all bringing everything into balance. But uh, in our modern lifestyles, we tend to go, 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 go all the time. And we never stop until our head actually hits the pillow. So because of that, uh, taking time out for relaxation, just to be present, just to be mindful, just to be aware of our systems and be able to let go through our systems. It is a game changer. It will really make a difference for all of us if we do that. So let's finish with a wee salute. Thank you so much, everyone. Well done. Thank you for putting up with my wee lectures. I am telling myself as much as I'm telling you this stuff, because um, often when we are at most in need of these practices, that's when it goes out the window. You know, when all of a sudden we're thrust into a very uh, turbulent time in our lives, the very things, the very tools that give us the best um, relief are the first ones to go. You know, like when mum hurt her back and I had to do all that care for both dad and mum and do my work then my own standing practice just went out the window because i was just so exhausted and i just couldn't bring myself to do the very thing i knew would help me through so um getting the discipline getting the regime going in times when actually we do have a bit of time and we don't have to force ourselves that is the thing that will then help carry us through when when the turbulence hits either to be so ingrained in us that we do it anyway because we need it or if we fall off the wagon at least we've done all that preparation and so therefore we have the iron shirt as as uh, my colleague jj says and um, so that our system is actually much more fortified and able to to take those difficult times so thank you and i look forward to seeing you next time well done, everyone. class on Friday? We don't have class on Friday this week, no, because I'll actually be on the floor with Master yeah. Chen. So it'll be Wednesday will be our next class. I'll send out a wee reminder about that. Thank you for, <laughs> for pointing it out. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jen. And I love all your wee lectures. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> it's a bit of interest. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Eric. Bye, 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 Bye,